hey homies I have been completely MIA like really badly MIA and I know I've gotten messages and I'm like I know I'm sorry but I, I swear I'm gonna do a video I promise there's a lot that's happened since I've seen you guys <laughs> My job in March and after that everything just my whole life became a flurry of focusing on what I wanted to do and, and in my job every week I come home and I'm like I'm gonna do a video this week I'm gonna do one this week I'm gonna and it never happens because usually I'm so tired by the time I get home from work that I just want to lay down and stuff my face so it's been really I've had a lot of change over the past um, like seven six seven months because of all that change I my channel really suffered and I've been really bummed about it honestly it's it's I, I put so much love and energy into my channel and I didn't want to feel like I just abandoned everybody who has subscribed to my channel and um, it does matter to me to continue doing this and continue sharing whatever I can share with you guys thank you for those of you who are still around <laughs> and um, and I am very sorry for not being here that's my story and actually today I wanted to make a video to talk about, specifically to talk about, you know, when you're in a place in your life where you are ready to make a change in terms of your job and not really knowing how or being afraid to make that change. And I'm, I wanted to talk about my process and hopefully that will help some of you guys out there if you are on the fence about where you are in life right now. So the first thing you want to do is be honest with yourself about how you're feeling about your job. And the biggest main question to ask is, are you happy and I know that sounds like oh right right we're all supposed to be happy in our job but really we should be happy doing what we do and there's no rule in life that says you have to be miserable at your like while doing your job like there is a way to, to find a job that brings you joy and and being able to thrive in that job um, sometimes that means that you have to take risks and you know I can give you a, a direct example from my life um, prior to this job being a teacher for eight years I worked in publishing and I was in you know from college I had made a goal like I want to work at this particular newspaper this is my dream this is what has to happen I need to make this happen I reached that goal I was there for eight years honestly to this day the good times it was one of the best jobs I've ever had it it will be in my memory forever I have so much love and affection for the time that I spent there but the last couple years were really hard and I knew I knew for the longest time that I needed to go but I was scared of change and I was scared of making that transition so I just stuck it out that can be really problematic because a lot of times what you do is you wait until you can't stand it any longer my boss at the time who was like my last vestige of hope um, in keeping me in this place because I wasn't I wasn't happy anymore had told me one day that she was leaving and it was like that was it for me you know I walked into work that morning not knowing that I would quit by the, the end of the day I gave two weeks notice naturally the right thing to do um, and they were really gracious about me making the decision they completely understood so it was fine but I didn't plan on quitting that day. I had no game plan set up in terms of what I was going to do next. I knew that I was dancing at the time. I was going to work full time and then dancing at rehearse and having rehearsals with a dance company every night. So it was like work all day, rehearse until midnight or one o'clock in the morning and then do it all over again and then have performances on weekends. It was like a lot. And I knew that more than anything, I loved dancing. And so I was like, okay, that's what I want to do. I want to have a job in dance, whether it's teaching, performing, what have you. At least I had that information, but because I hadn't planned and been honest with myself about how I felt about the job, I walked out of work that day, went home, and then proceeded to freak the fuck out. I was just like, oh my god, what did I do? What did I do? What did I do? <laughs> you know, like, what am I going to do next? It's not like dancers make a ton of money, you know, how am I going to live, how am I going to survive, like all these questions, freaking out. And if I had just been honest with myself, I wouldn't have had to go through that, um, that level of stress that I experienced for uh, a while after that. You have to be honest with yourself and say, okay, this job is making me miserable, I need to figure out what I want to do about that. 
because then you can make a plan and you can start to think about thoroughly what it is that you want what it is that you don't want and act accordingly rather than waiting on a kind of impulsive like situation where you don't really have a choice and you're kind of like going out the door and not knowing what to expect for your future so be honest about where you are be honest about how you feel about your job and then start taking steps to and start planning an exit strategy the second thing that you want to do is while you begin to plan your exit strategy you want to start to think about how much money you need in order to survive without being working without working I've had friends in the past when I was like you know fresh out of college who hated their jobs and so they just started behaving badly at their job just so they would get fired and then be able to collect unemployment now that's a route but I wouldn't suggest that mostly because now that reference is completely destroyed like you can't use this job anymore I always have a big mind of keeping mutual respect with your employer and not burning bridges I think the best thing to do is to plan out the next few months and how much money you need financially so go through all of your accounts figure out what your expenses are for the month how many bills that you have what is the cost of everything including your rent and you factor in how much you need for food and all of those things um, and then try to allocate money for that and I know it's hard easier said than done particularly if you're living paycheck to paycheck but what I've learned is that just taking $20 out $20 every paycheck that's not much money but if you're not entirely ready to go yet and you can or you're in a position right now that you like but maybe that might change the best thing to do is to start funneling a little money and having it set aside for if you decide that you need to leave if you end up leaving without planning it and it's like you know circumstance and you're like I'm out I'm done those kind of situations you always want to make sure that you're safeguarded for them I would suggest to try to plan for at least three months exit strategies are usually not immediate they usually take a little time so I was willing to be at this other job for two years being miserable you know like rather than not be doing anything to eventually get you out of the situation it's I could have used those two years to put money aside to save to plan I mean I probably wouldn't have even stayed two years I would have probably left after a year um, after I felt like I was secure enough I mean the other option obviously is to look for another job while you're in your current job that is the best scenario that is always the best way to go but sometimes life gets in the way things happen and it doesn't always work out that way so I think that no matter what it's always really good to have that extra money put aside if you end up leaving your job and it takes a while to find another one you're not like freaking out it's like you're completely liberated it's like oh I don't have to stay at this job if I don't like it. I can leave and I know that I'm going to be okay because I plan for that. That also helps you with your process of, of going for an interview because I think a lot of times when we go into interviews when we need it and we're like really needing the money and we're like freaking out, the amount of stress and, and uh, importance you put on that job interview can also negatively affect how you are in that interview. I think that if you feel like, well, I'm okay, if this one doesn't work out, I can go on a few others, I'm fine. You can go in with a little more confidence and a little more um, comfortability. And that comfortability creates an easier rapport with the person you're interviewing with, which will result in a better um, end result. You know, If you go in and you're completely stressed out and you don't know what to say and you're like really flustered, because you're like afraid and oh my god I really need this job and what if I don't get this job and you're too busy focusing on those things rather than the actual experience and the communication that you're having with your interviewer then you know there's a chance that it might not go as well as it could have if you didn't have those stresses hanging over you once you ask yourself what is your joy what brings you happiness what is it that you want to do the second thing you have to do is go in hundred and twenty thousand percent you're gonna be looking for a while probably you have to really think about what it is that you want and in order to manifest that you can't just expect it to land in your lap you have to like really work for it you have to help it along so the next thing you always want to think about is that you have to really send your resume out there you've got to really it's like a full-time job sometimes I was sending out about 10 to 15 a day and the thing is with those 10 and 15 a day you got to make sure that you actually write your cover letter if the job is asking for you to answer certain questions in your cover letter 
you have to answer those questions. If you don't answer those questions and then say that you pay close attention to detail on your resume, that is obviously not true because you didn't answer the questions that were presented to you in your cover letter. So it's really time consuming responding to a lot of jobs because your cover letter should be tailored to each position that you're looking at. Yes, it's time consuming, but if you think about all that time and energy that you're putting into it, the reward is getting something that you really want and that you really love. And so there are definitely ones that I would spend a little more time on. Like if I saw something that I thought was like the most perfect position for me, I would just pour my heart and soul into getting that resume and cover letter like pristine because, you know, I want, I want it to stand out. And so, um, it's just some things to think about. One of the things that I experienced a lot when I was looking for this position that I'm at now was I ended up on a lot of Skype interviews, which is really crazy. That's another thing to think about while you're going on this process that you might out of nowhere be like, can you Skype with us tomorrow? And you'll be like, oh, right. Try to choose a place in your house that you can have a Skype interview where there is no, um, nothing distracting pictures furniture, anything of that nature. You want them to only think about you as a person and not what your house looks like or what you're, you know, that you have like a lot of stuff going on in the background. That's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope that it was helpful. My goal is to make this happen regularly, more regularly. I will see you next time. Bye.